what do I want? What do I want? And what about you? What do you want? I wish I would have met me when I was your age because I didn't understand the magnitude of that question or my responsibility to answer it. And that if I'm brave enough, how I answer will determine how I live the remainder of my life. It's a big deal. Check this. You're at a party and you're dancing. And on the dance floor, you see the most boring, uninteresting, most basic human being alive. Now standing right next to them is the person that makes your heart stop. Who do you go ask out on a date? Sadly, most of us go basic, if at all. So I want you to ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want? Not what am I told I should want, or what my mom wants for me, or what seems realistic to want so that others can be comfortable. No, that's not the question. To answer it properly, I need to let go of the way I was programmed, forget about what I'm told is possible, and block out all that noise pollution that keeps me from honestly and truly answering the question. What do I want? Well, it's a lot easier to answer when we're kids. Back then, I remember, I wanted to have fun, live adventurously, help animals, inspire people, make a difference, and travel the world. But somewhere along the way, I learned by observing adults that I couldn't have that, that that's not what work looks like, and that that didn't make money. So without even realizing it, the people in my orbit normalized dissatisfaction. They blocked the flow, and I let them. So as a result, I grew up self-limiting, allowing myself only permission to explore a set list of basic common jobs, even though nothing from that category interested me in the slightest. I'm here today because I want to know something. Is that what you're doing right now? And you don't even realize it? Is it? In other words, how would what you've chosen to pursue now compare to what you would choose if you knew you couldn't fail? You and I both know it's probably not what you're chasing now. I became an engineer, but man, I was so incredibly unstimulated. Now, if there's any engineers in the audience, I'm not coming for you, but that job was not for my kind of brain. For me, it was a slow death for eight hours a day that showed in my work. And eventually, they fired me. So then, I moved to New York City, pursued another engineering job, showing up five days a week with no pulse in my heart, operating at just a fraction of my aptitude. My misery was undeniable, and they canned me too. Up until that point, I'd been fired from almost every job I'd ever had. So how did I get here? Why did I choose this? Why didn't I choose to do what I really wanted? Well, engineering seemed possible, practical, realistic, rational. This was my mistake. Being fired time and time again forced me to wake up, and it became clear that when you love something, you get good at it. And when you're really good at it, people pay you handsomely for it. So no wonder I was getting fired all the time. There was no love. For me to succeed, I needed love. To succeed, I needed to love something about what I'm doing. Hmm. I started to understand that question. What do I really want? I made a list. Hmm. I want to have fun. I want to live adventurously, help animals, inspire people, make a difference. I want to travel the world too. Sound familiar? 
It was the same damn thing I wanted when I was a kid. Nothing's changed. So how can I get those things? What job checks all those boxes? Hmm. Travel show? I mean, I would love to have a travel show, but who wouldn't? That thinking, that little seedling of thought turned into, I will become a journalist, and I will host my very own travel show. And for the first time in my life, I knew I answered that question correctly. You know why? Because the answer scared me to death. So there I was, in New York City, unemployed with this great new idea that everyone called irrational, illogical, ridiculous. And I couldn't detail a path for my friends or even myself as to how I'm going to get there. But my gut also knew I don't have to see the entire stairwell to take the first step. So I bought a camera and I went for it. Now I put together a reel and that's what we do in my industry. We make reels and we get them in front of agents to get work. And I found a New York City agent and I weaseled my way in front of him and he saw my reel and he said, Listen, Josh, I don't sign talent, but even if I did, I would never hire you. I'm sorry. Good luck. Now, I was supposed to be devastated, and I kind of was, but all I could think about was, man, you are so wrong. His doubt in me made me hungrier. So I took a few side gigs to keep the bills paid, and I worked to make better content, and I loved it. And it showed. It showed in my work. Imagine that. I loved what I was doing, and it showed in my work. It was good stuff. And eventually, I made a new reel and got it in front of that very same agent again. Except this time, I realized he didn't even recognize me. He said, look, Josh, I don't sign people. But why don't we do this? We're going to send you out on a few auditions, and we'll see how you go. Sure, it wasn't a yes, but it was better than a no. Look, it took me six years of doing what I don't like to realize what I loved. And then for another eight years, I pursued that. And in that time, I encountered constant, debilitating rejection with no work to show for it. And at one point, someone asked me, aren't you exhausted? from being rejected all the time? Doesn't that just wear you out? <sighs> you bet it does. But then I remember holding my aunt's hand in her last days just before her heart stopped beating. Or when I unknowingly said goodbye to my stepdad before cancer took him from us. Imagine if I cried to them about my fear of rejection They'd laugh. They'd laugh at me and they'd say, how dare you? I wish I was still around for someone to reject me. I wish I had just one more chance to take a risk and be rejected so I can learn, so I can grow. To be rejected is a blessing. To be rejected is a luxury in disguise because what you have right now, someone else is out there on their deathbed praying for exactly that. They'd say, Josh, you better step into this moment. If I decide that rejection is my biggest fear, then I stop taking risks, then I stop putting myself out there, right? But if I decide regret is what I fear the most, then I fall madly in love with rejection. I continued to meditate on the vision I was working towards. I'd ask the trees for help, the caterpillars. I'd demand the birds make it happen. I'd scream in at the mountains like a crazy person. I decided I was going to put every last dollar I owned into it. Meanwhile, my friends are effortlessly raking in six figures a year, going on vacations, having kids, buying houses. I lost my apartment, and I had to move into my car. Not a regular four-door sedan, huh? A smart car. 
I'm 6'2". You could imagine, yeah. With just a few bucks to my name, I decided to make another YouTube video because that's what video journalists do. But this time about my adventures in that tiny, tiny car. It was a fun concept. And while I was shooting that story, I got a call from NBC asking if I'd like to have my own travel show. <sighs> that was the day I got what I wanted. And you know what? That was also the same day my agent was suddenly able to sign me. When I make the choice to get off the matrix and pursue what I want, the universe doesn't just bend to meet me there. It sends me an entire army to help make that happen. But here's the kicker. It also shapeshifts to help me maximize my potential and refine my passion even deeper. But that doesn't always look the way you think it should. After three years of traveling with that show, my agent calls me again and says, hey, Josh, you might want to sit down for this one. They're not going to renew your show again. It's over. <sighs> right now, I'm unemployed. Yet people see me on TV as a celebrity and think, I got it all together. And I don't even know how I'm going to pay my mortgage next month. To make ends meet, I have to put my home online as a vacation rental and move back into that smart car. Right now, I can't even afford a house cleaner. So guess who's doing that? This guy. Yep. I spent 11 years of my life reaching, stretching, working to arrive here? What? So how did I go from award-winning travel show host to scrubbing toilets? But more importantly, how much of my time am I going to waste stuck and spiraling in poor me, pettiness? How did I get here when I could be putting that energy towards what I want? I mean, this is a very exciting time because what I want has changed. You want to know what that is? I want a new travel series that spotlights the heroes doing their part to help curb climate change and save humanity from our, our warming planet. That means our green tech innovators. That means meeting the culinary masterminds creating delicious plant-based variations of our water-guzzling food staples. And getting up close to the endangered wildlife via conservation efforts instead of zoos. It's forward thinking, it's passionate, it's educational. I think it's brilliant. And that's what I want. Would you watch it? Would you? Well, it doesn't matter, because I'm going for it anyway. But guess what? People and industry pros are already telling me, that's irrational, that's ridiculous, it's unmarketable. Here we go again. Here's what these guys don't understand. If I was a rational person, I would have stayed working as an engineer. If I was realistic, I wouldn't be standing in front of you right now. So how on earth are my dreams gonna come true if I keep my mind stuck inside the safety net of rational and realistic? How can I ever have my dream job if I'm so preoccupied with reality? In other words, if you proclaim to the world what you want and people think you're out of your flipping mind, if you ask me, you're on the right track. People tell me, I can never do that. You're so fearless. That's not true. That is not true. A robot is fearless. I'm the opposite. I'm fearful. I feel everything but I also understand I need fear to be brave. I need fear to be courageous. The only difference between me and everybody else is what I fear more than rejection, more than anything, is unbearable, sickening sinkholes of regret. Are you making the same mistake I did?
right now? Because if you are, you're in luck. Because even though a lot of us here don't anymore, you still have time to turn it all around. You may never find out if I got what I wanted or how my story ends. But if there's one thing you hear today, let it be this. Stop listening to everyone else and their love affair with rationality and reality. And start reprogramming yourself at a DNA deep level to trust your intuition, which is very much alive and aware that spectacular is a choice, not a coincidence. Because once you make the commitment to hurl all of yourself into what you love, not only will the universe respond to your courage by allowing the impossible to become a reality, but on the other end of all that fear, all the unknown, all the uncertainty, will always be a golden parachute waiting to help you land softly. That I can promise you. In other words, if it scares the bejesus out of you, do it. So, what do you want?